Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honor and a privilege for me to serve the people of American Samoa in the U.S. House of Representatives. My home district of American Samoa, an isolated group of islands, is six hours by plane south of Hawaii. Sometimes we jokingly refer to our three main exports as canned tuna, military personnel, and NFL players. Today I'd like to talk about the canned tuna, though. Due to an oversight, the Fair Minimum Wage Standards Act, which became law in 2007, contained language that stipulated that American Samoa must raise its minimum wage by 50 cents every three years, starting in 2009, until it meets the federal standard. Since that time, Congress has graciously granted two waivers to American Samoa, which prevents them from having to institute the increase, and wisely so. Had Congress not granted the waivers, the effects would have been absolutely devastating to our local economy, of which the tuna canneries comprise 80%. When the Fair Minimum Wage Standards Act was passed in 2007, American Samoa had two canneries on the island. As a direct result of the law, and concerned with future wage increases, in 2009, the day after a deadly tsunami struck our island, the cannery operated by Chicken of the Sea relocated to Thailand, causing thousands to instantly lose their jobs and hundreds shortly followed. In Thailand, Chicken of the Sea now pays their workers a mere $1.25 an hour and are rumored to be cutting wages further in 2016 while the workers in American Samoa are paid $4.76 an hour. While $4.76 may not seem like a large amount here in the States, one must realize that in American Samoa, the cost of living is drastically different. Due to how the lands are owned and managed in American Samoa, there's actually no such thing as rent or mortgage items that often comprise up to one half of a person's monthly expenses. Because our people do not have an expense for housing, $4.76 an hour goes much further than it would here in the States. While well-intended, the Fair Minimum Wage Standards Act has placed the economic well-being of American Samoa in great jeopardy. No one would like to see the people of American Samoa prosper and have their wages increased more than I. However, this is neither the time nor mechanism for such a drastic increase, as it would surely be the proverbial nail in the coffin for the local economy, as the two canneries that are currently operating out of American Samoa have stated the strong possibility of having to leave our island because they simply would not be able to compete financially against their foreign competitors. One of these canneries just opened this year and is trying to establish a toehold in the region. Without the extension, this will be very difficult for them. Currently, due to many factors, the long-term continuity of the Pango Pango-based canneries is now threatened by reduced tuna deliveries and supply, which will negatively affect cannery production, impact cannery employment, and support services, and could possibly destroy American Samoa's economy altogether. Past decisions by the United States government have led to the current dire situation. In 2005, the U.S. government agreed to reduce fishing opportunities by U.S. per seine vessels on the high seas and within the U.S. EEZ. At the same time, the U.S. per seine fleet contracted from 49 vessels in 1994 to 11 in 2007. This major shift in the management of the per seine fishery should have been recognized by the United States government as significant 
in terms of fleet operations and the impact it would have on American Samoa. Unfortunately, it seems that the territory was not considered. That same year, the U.S. allowed Taiwanese-built vessels to become U.S. flagged, thereby receiving the same benefits afforded under the South Pacific Tuna Treaty. These new vessels fish farther away from American Samoa and predominantly offload their catch in Thailand. In 2013, the U.S. government agreed to pay a combined amount from both government and industry of approximately $90 million, while agreeing to further reduce the United States fishing effort on the high seas. After that, in 2014, the United States agreed to an inexcusable deal to the detriment of American Samoa, reducing the amount of fishing days available in Kiribati waters to the United States fleet from 4,313 to just 300 days in one year. Kiribati waters typically are the most productive per same fishing grounds in close proximity to Pango Pango. However, American Samoa-based per seine vessels are now forced to travel great distances, making Pango Pango canneries less desirable and increasing transshipping to foreign ports. In addition, the expansion of the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument and the high seas effort limit have further reduced the fishing grounds available to the American Samoa-based Persane fleet, lending to the dire situation facing American Samoa's local canneries. These are the waters that have been fished by our people for many centuries. Like other small island developing states and territories in the Pacific, American Samoa and the fishing industry it supports should be afforded special recognition, not crushed by the worst aspects of capitalism, and I say this as a devout capitalist. Until we begin to safeguard our fishery interests in the region, American Samoa's tuna fisheries will continue to wither, creating economic ruin in American Samoa, the other Pacific territories, and even Hawaii, leaving the United States as a passive observer in the world's largest tuna fishery leaving other nations such as China to run roughshod over the fisheries to the detriment of not only our people, but the environment as well. We must reverse some of the missteps the United States has taken over the years, which have left the American Samoa economy in this highly vulnerable position. The closing off of large swaths of the ocean under the guise of national monuments which cover thousands of square miles of traditional fishing grounds that our people have used for centuries to the reduction in allotted fishing days that have gone from over 4,000 to just under 500 in one year. This is certainly not the time to put further pressure on an industry that is seemingly under attack from all sides. A local industry that operates at a loss in comparison to its competitors when it comes to labor, due to their long-standing relationship with the people of American Samoa, for which we are very grateful. I have heard some concern about Congress continuing to kick the can down the road on this issue. To those, I extend willing and eager hands for cooperation and assistance in fixing the mechanism by which the wages are set in American Samoa. The playing fields between the United States and American Samoa are too drastically different to place on the same wage scale. And to keep American Samoa tied to the current standard is dangerous and irresponsible. It is my plan to use the time granted in the extension to work on a new mechanism for setting the minimum wage rate in American Samoa. 
and I happily encourage fellow members to join me in this mission. If there is ever any bill that I introduce that I wish I could vote against, this would be it. However, while it's difficult, I also know that it must be done. Time has expired. Oftentimes, the things that are the most difficult are also the most important. And currently, there is no issue more important to the economic well-being of American Samoa than this. I respectfully and wholeheartedly ask my colleagues in both the House and Senate to support this legislation that General is so absolutely critical to the economic stability is yielded three minutes. of American Samoa. Without it, I'm afraid we'll be back here in just a few months trying to figure out a way to subsidize what is already the most economically challenged territory or state in our nation. The tuna, can industry, the tuna canning industry is all we have. There's no Coca-Cola or IBM. We have no Silicon Valley there to provide massive revenue and employment opportunity to the territory. There aren't numerous military and government facilities that provide sources of economic growth. We are not surrounded by fellow states that enable us to expand to other markets. All we have is the tuna industry, and we are grateful. So again, I graciously ask my fellow colleagues to support this unfortunate yet essential piece of legislation. If you cannot support it, all I ask is that you do not block it, because it would be absolutely devastating to our people. I want to thank Chairman Klein, Ranking Member Scott, and the committee staff for their assistance in getting this measure to the floor, as well as the numerous other staff and members who put in many hours of hard work to get us here today.